Hey everyone, welcome to the bus. Let me show you how to get in. When you arrive at the bus, it'll either be unlocked, which means that you can just pull the door, or you can use your key to unlock it here. And then you just turn this to the left. Pull the door open. You can pull it all the way open, and then just get in. Be careful with the first step. It's about two feet. Once you're in the bus, you can either close the door and lock it, or you can just close the door and not lock it. This is how you close the door. You just pull it shut like that. If you choose to lock it from the inside so you have your security, you take this black metal pipe, which will be sitting here, and then just slide this bar all the way across. And if you get it to this point, there's no way for anybody to enter. It's kind of like a medieval way of keeping yourself secure. The second part of the security is in the back of the bus. And that's right here. So if you want to be able to lock the back door, you just slide this over like that, and then no one will be able to enter. But if you do want to be able to exit out the back or open up the door to let the breeze in, you remove that and then just slide this open. The bus door will go all the way back until it clicks. And then the door will be secured open. And if you want to bring it back in, you just push it out to the open spot, and then you pull it in. Once it gets to this point, you slide it shut like that. And then if you want to lock yourself in, you just put that over and then you're secure. If this door is locked and the front door is locked, then nobody else will be able to get in here while you're in here. Oh, the fire and the smoke alarm works perfectly fine. We'll test it and keep the batteries accurate. You have really large drawers here. And so if you want, you can just throw your bag straight into this guy and then slide it really shut right away. The clothes hanger is very durable. As you can see, I'm shaking the bus, so it's perfectly safe to put everything on. And then you've got these little hooks for like jewelry or your knickknacks or whatever. When I'm staying in the bus, I like to use this as the uh, dirty clothes. Just open and shut this. You throw your dirty clothes in there, and then when you're ready to wash them, you can just use the washing machine here. To use the washing machine, you'll select here, but the easiest way is to just go three. And if you slide this to three, you press the on button, and then you press start, you'll get it. You want to set the dryer to be whatever, but if your clothes go through the whole cycle and they don't, and then and after they spin dry, what you want to do is set it over to five, which as you can see is cotton dry, synthetic dry, or wool dry. Either five, 10, or 13 are all dry. And so if you set those to dry and you set a specific time, you press the on button and you press start and it'll go like that. The dryer works great. It works just like a normal industrial grade dryer. So if your clothes haven't come out dry, then just run them again. There's no link collection device on this. It cycles it out by itself. And so you just add your soap in here and then you're ready to go. It's quite simple. And then the washing liquid is stored right here. So you can just use that. We also have a fire extinguisher right here. And then the first aid kit will also be included in this little cupboard. There's two switches um, next to the bathroom. There's the light switch. This is the solar powered light. And then there is the uh, fan. This, just, this is just the bathroom air fan. And that'll just suck out any um, moisture or uh, toilet smells. <laughs> the toilet is a high efficiency toilet. So um, once you are ready to flush the toilet, you just step here and it'll all go away. And then there's this as well if you want to clean up a little bit. But in order to use this, you have to depress with your foot. The sh shower is very self-explanatory. The hot is to the left, and you get this fancy little light show when you take a shower. It's important to keep the drain clear because we don't want water going into the hallway, obviously. And then you've got the pocket door. The way you do it is you just grab there, push. Stove works by just pressing down. The pressing down gets you the clicks, and then if you move to the left, you'll see that the stove comes on. The refrigerator works in order to make sure it's on. Every once in a while, somebody will press this button by accident. This is the power button. The mode button, you'll see right now, you can see that it's uh, switched to the plug. There's plug, gas, and then gas plug. But what we want to do is keep it on the plug. So if you're here and you notice that this is anything other than that, then you just press mode again and again until you get back to the plug. And then this is the temperature. If you want it to get cold really quickly, nine is the high, highest, one is the lowest. We set it at five just normally because that's because uh, it's fun that way. If it's hot out, you can use this device. This one runs on a thermostat, and the what it does is controls the fan. 
So if you push the button on, you can see the fan will kick on. This is a good idea when you're cooking. If you'd like, it's not mandatory. The remote has two types of settings. There's speed setting, which is at 100% right now, or you can do temperature. And if you set it down to 70, you'll see that it turned off automatically because it's warmer than 70 degrees right now and it won't go on. But if the temperatures start rising, if the temperature starts rising, this thing will kick on automatically and fluctuate its speed based upon um, the temperature that you set. If it starts to rain and you have this thing open, it's no big deal. It has a rain sensor, so it will automatically close by itself. This is the thermostat. The thermostat has a temperature gauge right there. You can see the red. As you can see, at the time of filming this, it's 70 degrees. In order to turn the thermostat on, you have to click this guy over. This will make it so that the heater is on. However, it will only turn on if this is over. Now listen, as I slide this over, you'll hear it. There, now it clicked on. Now, so right now what we're doing is heating the house and it's at 70 degrees already, so we don't really need that. It would get too hot in here. So what I'm gonna do is turn it down. It turned it down and so now it's set to kick on around 60 degrees and that's pretty reasonable. Now because it's the hot and it's the middle of the day, I'm just gonna turn the thermostat off and now I don't have to worry about the machine running. Even after you turn it off, it'll still sound like it's running for a little bit. That's perfectly regular. It's just a function of the furnace clearing out the gas from the burning process. This device heats the floor in the, in the bathroom. So it'll make it so that when you take a shower in the morning, the floor will be warm for your feet. This will be set up when you arrive. If you'd like to try to set it up yourself, it's fairly easy to program, but it does take a little bit of focus. We're not gonna go into it because we'll have it set automatically for you. This is the inverter charger. Basically, you'll see this should be this light should be on and this light should be off. This just basically converts the solar power into 120 volt power, which you'll be using uh, for your appliances and regular outlets. This is the solar controller. The percentage will tell you the percentage of battery that we have. And then if you click the B button, you can see the voltage of the battery and you can see the amp draw. This means right now we're getting 2.6 amps are being delivered from the solar panels out to the batteries. You won't need to mess with this thing at all. It is all automatic. Thank you guys for booking the bus. I hope you have a great stay. Bye-bye.